Hello, you're watching Afghan News with Mohsen Jamal. Around 150 Afghans took to the streets in the capital Kabul on Saturday, chanting death to Pakistan in protest against weeks of cross-border shelling of two eastern provinces by Pakistani forces. The bombardment has strained ties between the neighbors, and on Friday, General Aminullah Markhel, the top regional border police commander, offered to resign over the government's response, saying he could not stand by as civilians were killed. Markhel said two weeks ago that 12 civilians had been killed by the shells and many others wounded. Last month, President Hamid Karzai strongly condemned the shelling and said some 470 rockets had been fired into the volatile eastern provinces of Kunar and Ningarhar. A roadside bomb exploded under a civilian van in southern Afghanistan on Saturday morning, killing 13 people, including four women and two children. The interim ministry said the attack in Shamalzai district of Zabul province comes two days after another roadside bomb killed 13 civilians and wounded 33 in southwestern Nimroz province. The interim ministry says Saturday's bomb was planted by the enemies of peace and stability in Afghanistan, a reference to the Taliban-led insurgents fighting the Afghan government and its western bakers. Also in the south on Saturday, two gunmen on a motorcycle killed Wakil Muhammad Khan, a member of the local council in Nahri Saraj district of Helmand province, the interim ministry said. The Iranian military smuggled New Delhi munitions to its allies in Iraq and Afghanistan in recent months in order, in order to accelerate the U.S. withdrawals from these countries, the Wall Street Journal has reported. Citing unnamed U.S. officials, the newspaper said the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps has supplied its allies with rocket-assisted projectiles, which have already killed American troops. The official said Iranians had also given long-range rockets to the Taliban in Afghanistan, increasing the insurgency ability to hit U.S. and other coalition positions from a safer distance, the report said. Major General James Bochanan, the top U.S. military spokesman in Iraq, told the journal that they are likely to see the Iranian-backed groups continue to maintain high attack levels but are not going to deter them from doing everything to help the Iraqi security forces. Two more Turkish engineers who were kidnapped in Afghanistan and may have been freed by their captors, Turkish officials said on Friday. Three Turkish engineers Saleh Gol, Ersen Osturk and Kemal Letin Gol were kidnapped in south of Kabul in May. The Turkish officials said adding that their car was found on a road near the city of Pulialam on May 9th. Kamila Kemal Letin Gol was freed earlier and two other engineers were freed on Thursday, officials said. United States Secretary of State Hillary Clinton arrived in Madrid on Friday for a two-day official visit to Spain, her first to the Iberian country since being appointed to her post. Clinton, who was welcomed by the U.S. Ambassador to Spain, Ellen Solomon, at the military base of Torre John de Ordos in Madrid, is due to meet Spanish president. Prime Minister Jose Luis Rodriguez Zapatero and King Juan Carlos of Spain on Saturday. Afghanistan, the Middle East, North Africa and the current Spanish economic crisis will be on top of Clinton's agenda, according to Spanish Foreign Ministry sources. Spain will withdraw 10% of the 1,500 troops it has in Afghanistan in the first half of next year with a complete drawdown to be completed by 2014. Dominic Strauss-Kane, the former head of the International Monetary Fund, has been released from house arrest in the sexual assault case against him. The French politician appeared briefly in a New York courtroom on Friday after reports that prosecutors had grave doubts about the credibility credibility of strauss Kahn's accuser. The judge stressed that the move does not mean that the case is over and prosecutors did not agree to dismiss the sexual assault case against strauss Kahn. strauss Kahn was arrested in May accused of trying to rape a hotel maid and has been confined to a Manhattan apartment. Syrian forces killed 24 civilians on Friday. A prominent rights lawyer said as a 
as tens of thousands of people called on President Bashar al-Assad to step down as some of the biggest demonstrations since a three-month uprising. Defying Assad's military crackdown, demonstrators took to the streets again after Friday prayers across the country from towns near the western Lebanese border to the desert regions near Iraq and the east. Encouraged by the widening protests, prominent opposition figures plan to convene a national salvation conference in Damascus on July 16th to reach a broad-based blueprint trained for solving Syria's political crisis. Protesters have taken no to the streets for 14 weeks to protest against a certain unrest which has claimed the lives of around 1,300 civilians with security forces arresting over 12,000 people and shooting security personnel who refused to fire on civilians, according to riots groups. Muammar Gaddafi, the Libyan leader, has delivered a telephone address through loudspeakers to thousands of supporters gathered in Tripoli's Green Square, warning the NATO-led alliance to stop its war support or face catastrophe. In, in the Friday speech, 100 days after NATO first entered the country, Gaddafi gave multiple warnings to foreign forces that have been militarily supporting anti-regime rebels for months to a crowd of supporters who waved green flags and posters of the head of the state. Addressing the West, Gaddafi warned that Libyans could take revenge on Europe for supporting of rebel forces. Friday's was one of the largest pro-government rallies in the St. Vicks, coming just days after the International Criminal Court issued arrest warrants for Gaddafi and two others. Hundreds of thousands of Yemenis have staged rallies for and against the rule of Ali Abdullah Saleh, the president across the country. The demonstrations after Friday prayers came as Saleh continued to receive medical treatment in neighboring Saudi Arabia for severe wounds sustained in an explosion at his presidential compound on June 3rd. Saleh, 69, who has faced nearly six months of protests against his 33-year rule, has not appeared in public since the blast that killed 11 people and wounded 124 others, among them senior officers. Pro-democracy protesters vote on Friday to continue their demonstrations until their demands are made. And that Moroccans have overwhelmingly voted to approve a revised constitution that will curb King Mohammed VI's near absolute powers in the North African nation, the country's interim minister has said. Taib Cherkoe, the interim minister, announced shortly after the voting closed on Friday that the poll showed 98 percent in favor of the changes, with 94 percent of stations supporting. The polls closed at 18 GMT on Friday after 11 hours of voting, and the final voting percentage was recorded at 72.65 percent. Muhammad announced the referendum last month in what is widely seen as a move toward of Arab Spring Street protests sweeping the region. And that's all for now. Thanks for joining us.